Okay, morning everybody. Morning. So we were sort of working through three or four weeks of data visualization type topics. We did a few weeks ago we did um, looking at data sources and then last week we looked at data visualization and this week we're now going to look at dashboards, which is a way of presenting different sets of information in a meaningful way. So yeah, okay. So it's it's a, it's a well, it's a visual interface consisting of different graphs and different bits of text that allows us to make business decisions about the effectiveness of the business. So it's condensing all your big data, if you like, down into small uh, chunks, like we heard the other week with David um, McCandley's driving down the data into small small chunks so we can get a better picture of what's going on within that data. And it's, a lot of it is basically di uh, displayed graphically rather than lots of numbers. Lots of numbers don't really mean anything so we can digest them down into graphics like the um, Hans Rosling uh, Gapminder sort of graph, that kind of stuff, we can really condense it down. And we can focus attention, the idea is to focus attention on key trends within a business. What we're trying to measure uh, business um, efficiency, what kind of key performance indicators we're looking at. And we want to make sure the data is relevant to the dashboard, so that the user has a goal for looking at the dashboard, what they're trying to find out, what business decision are they trying to focus on. Um, so we need to try and get all that information, condense all that stuff down into a meaningful display that we can see very easily. Okay. So. Um, a lot of the information that I've got used in this session is from this book, Information Dashboard Design. I have it here in my hand. I'm going to put it back in the library fairly soon, so it will be available to you. But I've used a lot of material from here. And I'll come to the, uh, the author shortly again. So Stephen Few, very influential person in the design of dashboards. Um, and in his books, he very much argues against a lot of fancy graphics. So the, the temptation when you're doing a dashboard is to put in all kinds of fancy little meters and displays and speedometer type stuff, because we can. Yeah? And also, you know, as it's a dashboard, we automatically think we should make it look like a car dashboard. And really, Stephen Few argues that these are just distractions. It's nice, pretty graphics. And it's a nice thing to do with a computer and produce this stuff, but actually it's distracting. We cannot really picture the, the meaning of the data very easily. So whilst we can put steering wheels in here and pretend it's a car dashboard, it really doesn't work. We're just making things too complicated and making things too, too fussy. And we lose the concentration, we lose the power of actually the graphics in there to show us what we're trying to see in terms of any trends in, in the business. We've lost quite a bit off the bottom here, haven't we? Never mind. You can see it on your own screens there. So again, down here, lots of sort of dial-like um, graphics, but they're not really that helpful in terms of at-a-glance view of what's going on in the business and what they may be trying to measure and to take um, action against. And these down here as well, daily revenue versus target. I mean, it's 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 nice, a nice bit of graphic, but in terms of giving you a message, it's not actually that, it doesn't help anything, it doesn't help. So Stephen Few doesn't like this kind of images. And he also um, doesn't, he also um, says we should try and keep things simple. The temptation is because we can do it, is to put in all sorts of 3D effects and fancy bar, fancy bar chart, fancy pie chart stuff here. But it's actually very difficult, if you look at it, to to actually to figure out what these what these values are, because you've got the 3D sort of picture, you can't really tell where the where the lines are and where the um, the bars are going. So he says that this all these extra visual effects don't actually add any value; they actually just get in the way, and that they're distracting. And there's an also a, there's a bar chart down here. You can see that it's just got one value in it. Really, it's, it's meaningless as a, as a diagram. It doesn't say anything at all. You may as well just have a figure. So it's, it's the correct use of 
of, of visualization and using the right um, graph for the right for the right job. And again, another one. It's it's nice looking in terms of graphics, fancy 3D effects, but in terms of a, being a dashboard to help you focus on your key items of data, it isn't actually very helpful and it's all very distracting. We don't really know what these dials are for or what they're indicating and the, the fancy edges here, again, don't add anything to our understanding of the, of the meaning of the data. So this is a little bit better, this style of dashboard. We've got quite clear areas of the dashboard with different measures in. We've got a mix of, of table data and graphs, which is OK. We can, we can see what the figures are meaning. So this isn't too bad. It's much better than having all those 3D effects of, of speed, speedometers and things like that, and steering wheels appearing in the middle of the graph. But in some ways, so it's generally it's better, but some of the, the graphical representations of the data actually don't really mean that very much. So costs, this is um, sort of a, a dashboard from a, a transport system, trying to look at the, um, the number of passengers using it and the number of trains running and uh, some customer satisfaction uh, measures here, uh, how many missed trips, how many broken down trains and things there were. So you can imagine your operations manager of the transport system wanted to know how well the transport network is working. So he needs to see these measures, performance measures, all in one place. And in that respect, it's not, it's not too bad. You can see all sorts of different uh, criteria and different characteristics. But some of them are a bit strange. So this one here, using these circles, for cost versus revenue across the year, January, February, March, April, May. It's that one that says revenue and then costs. It, it's, it's very difficult to see what, what this means in terms of balancing your cost against your revenue and whether you're making a profit or not. So some of the graphics are not used very well, they're just, too, they're just confusing. So a better display, but still some of the graphics are not used in a very, in a very, very good way. This one, well, what do you think of that? In terms of a dashboard, in terms of being able to pick out key indicators quickly and make, you know, imagine you've got to make a decision about something. What's your initial impression of that? It's bad. Why is it, why is it bad? I don't, it, I, under, I don't understand what's going on. No, I don't understand what's going on either. Um, it's too fussy, there's too many there's too many, you know, you've got this sort of circle thing around here. I don't know what that's supposed to be representing. And then you've got some maps here with these, these sort of graphic symbols on it. MTD, I don't know what that is. Or, or quarter, quarter to date, month to date. Okay, got it there. And then you've got some, some, some measure of, of metrics over the year. What's that? Um, not sure what that is. There's a key at the top here, but it's it's generally too fussy and too distracting. You cannot pick out the important information that you're looking for. And again, some some uses of, of graphic display that are really not very helpful. I have often seen in student final year projects when they put graphs in, using 3D graphs and things. But actually, they're not really that helpful. You, you, you can do it, but in terms of interpreting, interpreting the graph, it's not really very helpful. So on this one, for example, it's not really clear what the, the different values are. And a pie chart here, you know, it, it, it just, it's, not, it's not really showing you what you need to know. And then this one on the bottom, it's very difficult to see what these what these values are down here because of the three D effect. It would be much better just as, as two two dimensional bars. Yeah, and then this oh, graph using a pencil image. Again, it's it's all fluff that gets in the way you that gets in the way of you focusing on what you really want to do, what you're looking for. Okay, so we've looked at some pretty um, horrendous examples. One, one of them wasn't too bad, but we've looked at some ones that really we should be, should be using that kind of style. The other thing about 
computer power these days, we have an enormous lot of colours to use, millions and millions of colours we've got we can use. But in fact we need to use these colours very carefully. In, in the, just because we've got a million colours to use doesn't mean to say we should use them all. We need to be careful about how we pick them and, con and contrast the colours against each other to, to show what we're trying to show what we're trying to achieve. And again, Stephen Few has got a lot to say about this. And one of the things that he talks about is, is colour blindness. In that, in, I don't know what, what, in, in the sort of UK population, about 10% of males are colour blind and 1% of females. And this, that, the most common one is a confusion between red, green, and yellow, in that they all look alike. You cannot tell, people with colour blindness cannot tell the difference between red, green, and yellow very easily. So he's suggesting using hue, or the saturation level of the colour, instead of red, green, red, green, and yellow. I'll explain, let's show that in a minute. So this illustrates the, the effect of the colour blindness. So this is a, in normal vision, green here, green apple, a yellow apple, and a red apple. And I can see them perfectly reasonably well. Um, but to somebody that's got colour blindness, this is a green, this is a yellow, this is a red. There is actually very, diff very little difference between the three colours. So if you use red, green, and, and yellow to highlight particular things, items in your, in your data, <coughs> people with a colour blindness, which is a quite a large 10% of the population, are not going to be able to pick, pick those different colours out. So they're not going to see what, what you're trying to say. With traffic lights on the road, there's no safety problem because you can tell which one is lit. The top's red, the middle's yellow, and the bottom's green. So there's no safety problem there. But when you've got a graph and there's no, sort of, um, you kind of hook onto some kind of positional interpretation, then it's, uh, it's difficult. So if you can see the bottom of your slide, you might not be able to see one from where you're sitting, but if you look at the bottom of the slide, there's a bullet graph. And this is what Stephen Few is saying how the data should be represented. Instead of red, green, yellow, is to use these hues here. So slightly darker here, a bit lighter, and then lighter on the end to show the, so where you would use red, green, and yellow, he's saying we should use these saturation levels and, and increase the saturation levels instead. So this bullet graph here at the bottom of the slide is his um, response, suggestion for representing data so you've got the bar column here, and then you've got a target point at the bottom, and then the different cues for representing the different sort of okay, good, and excellent sort of range. And then, so um, these are the kind of colours that we can use. That sort of in, in, um, these are sort of standard colours here, and then this is the colour emphasised as well. So we can we can use a fairly Instead of using millions of colours, we can use a fairly uh, limited set of colours quite effectively to get over the message that we want, bearing in mind the red, green, uh, red, yellow, green confusion. Uh, we need to bear that in mind as well. So we've got to be careful, basically. So this is an example of Stephen Few's suggestion in terms of representing data that otherwise might be, might, where we might use a lot of colour. <coughs> And fancy dials and speedometers and 3D effects. Much simpler display. So this is um, so the actual value of the, the measure here is shown in the sort of solid bar, 275 uh, <coughs> something or other. Well, it doesn't really matter what the value is, but and then the, the, the bar here indicates the target for the year, for example, year to date. And then we've got these bands here indicating that that's in the sort of ideal range, the targets in the ideal range. And this one here, the, the quality of the quantity that we're measuring is in the sort of okay section, but it's short of its target. So this is the value and the target we're after is up here. So this illustrates the way that um, Stephen Few is promoting use of these diagrams rather than lots of colours and lots of fancy images. So this is a sort of horizontal bar and then we've got the vertical bar measures here, so revenue, profit, average order, um, so again, so revenue for example, the 
the solid bar line indicates the revenue so far is about 200 and it's actually it's the same values, isn't it? It's the same, it's the same uh, graphs. So this one's this one here. So it's about 275 revenue, uh, which is past its target. This one hasn't reached the target, and this one is way short of the target that we're after. So you can see what we're at. You can see your key performance indicators very quickly. Another very useful graphic effect to, to get over a message very quickly in a small space, which is what a dashboard does. A dashboard has got three or four or five different criteria in it, and we want to get hold of the message of the company performance, if you like, very quickly. And uh, I mentioned Edward Tuft last week, if you remember, <coughs> some of his visualizations, particularly with the um, Challenger disaster, uh, if you remember about that. So he's, he invented a few years ago now this idea of what's called a spark line, where we just show the line and the trend of the line, revenue, average order size, on-time delivery. So we can see at a glance what the, what the trend is for that particular measure. We're not worried too much about the exact values, but we're just looking for the trend. And these dots here indicate ones that are going well and ones that are not going well. So again, we can pick up the information very quickly. This one is Bit more detailed, you've got a starting value and an end value, so it gives you a bit more information than the simplest version. So, these, these are the use of spark lines uh, in dashboards to show information very quickly when we just need the summary and not the actual values itself. So, this is a Stephen Fuse's interpretation of a, of a dashboard. It's much simpler visually than having lots of 3D effects and dials and graphs. Using these um, bullet graphs here extensively for each of the different values. So this is a sales dashboard for, can you see what it is? I think it's wine, I think. Yeah, market share here. I think it's some kind of uh, drink. So it's a sales dashboard. You can imagine a company, company executive looking at this to see how the sales of his wine or drinks or soft drinks is, is actually progressing. So we've got a mixture of these bullet graphs, nicely arranged, title on each one, clear text, nice clean lines here, arranged nicely over the, over the screen. And then we do have some text as well show the, um, the top 10 um, customers and their, and their re revenue. So again, it's not all graphs. There are some graphs, but there's also put some, some text in to show meaningful information that is after. So this will give a, an executive or a decision maker, manager, a nice view of the performance of the business in a very simple way. And that's what the dashboard does. Another one, this is a uh, Chief Information Officer, CIO, Chief Information Officer dashboard. So this is actually monitoring the, the performance of a computer system within an organisation, like a network or something like that. So daily network traffic analysis here, for example, um, daily need for the last six months. So there's several different graphs here. So, and then you've got the hours along the bottom, morning, 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning through till midday. So the, it shows quite, actually quite nicely the, the, the network traffic. So it's gonna be very low in the middle of the night when nobody's working, but it goes up at nine, 10 o'clock in the morning here when people are, are getting to work and starting to do their tasks. It goes down at lunchtime and then goes up again in the afternoon. And there's quite a lot of people working at 12, well, network activity at mid, in midnight, which is interesting. And then there's other sort of text numbers and graphs and numbers and, um, and sort of progress of major projects here, whether the major projects are on, running on time, major hardware changes, um, website facelift, whether that project is, is working. Is working, uh, is working well. 
critical events, how many major problems there have been. So there's a lot of there's a lot of key information all digested down into a nice simple compact display and that's what the dashboard is about. Any particular observations about about that compared to a, one of the ones we saw earlier? It's more clear. It is clear, isn't it? Yeah. And you cut it that the gutter. <coughs> Faster than uh, normal. Yeah, there's no, there's no 3D dials to get in the way of your image of or picture. Uh, and the numbers very clear. Yes. And if the, you the, are want to look about some numbers, yeah, you can very easily uh, because it's been written by numbers, not written by by graphs. Yeah. Okay. What What do you think of the sort of font and the the contrast between the the background and the foreground, if you like? Whereas, it, whereas we had lots of different colours in some of the other ones. It's just two colours really, there's only very black and yeah. in that yellow. The yellow, just to highlight the title. So the titles are highlighted with with the with yellow. What about the contrast between the text and the background? As compared to some of the others we saw earlier. Fine. It's, white. it's white, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. It's very simple. Yes. The text stands out clearly. The font is nice and clean. Very clean, simple font. Uh, yeah. This one. This one. Yeah, it's it's a little, perhaps a little bit, um, little bit light in terms of um, the presence. Maybe a, maybe some, a, a deeper colour might have been better, but okay. so a nice example. One or two things we may we think may may be possible to improve a bit, but a nice example as compared to some of the others we saw earlier. Again, yet another. This is a telesales dashboard, so you can imagine an office with people all in little cubicles answering phones from the public or whatever and somebody sitting in their supervisor's office monitoring the, all the calls coming in and how well the individual uh, help desk people for example telesales people are performing so you've got a you've got all the names of the telesales staff here and you can see which ones are selling the most products orders per hour here calls per hour so you can see which are the top ranking sales performing sales people um, and the call durations as well is marked. So there's a lot of information in that small space on that, on that part of the graph. Um, and overall performance of the business here, and then the uh, number of hourly calls. So we're getting quite a few in the evening here. Uh, 20, sort of, so four till, or four till midnight. So the major, the major number of calls are coming in about five or six o'clock in the evening up to eight. Um, so, and that's over the uh, hourly and then you've got another one here, sort of up to um, midnight as well. So that's the calls and that's the orders. Nice, simple, clean, effective. Yet another, this one's got much more information on it. But still, it looks quite complex to start with, there's a lot of information and it's actually a dashboard for a teacher, I guess, of the class and they've got the pupils in their class listed here and they've got their grades for different assignments, different assessments over here and um, again the sort of grades for the assignments and scores, attendance here as well. Um, so imagine you get a, a complete picture of your class of the way yes one bit. no is similar uh, make similarity for all for data and one bit yes it's very clean and it is yes you've got a lot of information you've got you've got attendance you've got grades you've got progress over the over the course 
you know, how they've gone, how they've performed all the different things. Okay, assignments one to five. Class discipline here, interesting. Tardy, absent, referrals, detentions. So this will be a sort of a school, high school um, class. Um, late assignments. So a lot of information condensed down into what initially looks quite complex, but when you start looking at it and breaking it down, it's actually quite straightforward. Again, nice contrast between the, the text and the background, clear fonts, headings stand out as well. Subtle use of colour, not overly done, just a few different colours used, mostly sort of nice contrast between the text and the, and the background. Another, another one. <laughs> okay, almost, almost fed up with these examples. Yeah. <laughs> But this is another sales dashboard. Again, a lot of information on it. Um, key metrics, year to date, revenue, profit, orders, top 10 customers this quarter, who are they selling most of their products to? Uh, wines, Aros, the big wine store. Okay, um, what else have we got? Product sales here, revenue by quarter, every three months, revenue over a year. So again, we're using this bullet graph using the bullet graph nicely here to show the actual value and then it's actually reached its target the vertical bar is a target and then there's these different hues here to show whether or not it's poor, okay or, or good and then a sort of a, 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 a y, an x-axis values along the bottom okay another one how many of these have I got? Oh, there's one more after this as well. So, marketing analysis. Again, you get the general idea. We've got some text here, top top ten products, and then some graphs. Quite simply done. Number of visitors to the web to the website, and on an interesting sort of summary up here, month to date compared to target visitors orders. So they're not quite up to target on visitors, but their orders are over target. Um, so again, nicely, nicely laid out, clean, simple, neat, tidy. You can see what you're after very quickly. Maths teachers dashboard. Again, another one you can imagine. You set of data for a for a class here. Your, pupil, your individual pupils in the class. Uh, sort of grades for the assignments, discipline, what's the discipline um, record here, uh, class performance overall in terms of grades as well, um, and another assessment graph here with the percentages of, of the different pupils and which were they most of the percentages are coming around about 80% or so down here. Again, another nice, clean display showing you clearly what uh, what you what what performance indicators you're interested in. And after all that, we can actually try to condense all the good practice down into a set of heuristics for dashboard evaluation. This will be familiar to, to those of you that. Have taking my first and second year modules in, you can actually have heuristic principles for user interface evaluation, if you remember Schneiderman, possibly, Ben Schneiderman and his eight golden rules, those of you that have come through the first and second year. And we can have a similar set of heuristic principles for dashboard evaluation, um, clarity of the context, uh, consistency of the display, Aesthetics and engagement, we don't need to be too over, we need to be careful with that one. Um, so there's a, a bit, so there's, there's the, the main criteria here, and then expand a little bit underneath about what makes a good, makes a good dashboard. After condensing down all those things we've seen already in the first, and all those different um, dashboard examples. So 
So, are you now um, confident that you can design good dashboards? I've got a better idea of what yeah. design factors to take into account when you're doing when you're designing dashboards. The, you've got to be careful about doing fancy colours, fancy effects just for the sake of it. Just because you can. Okay, so that's a little bit of a whisk through some, some good practice in dashboard design. I heard this news article the other day when I was driving to work in, in the car about the data observatories. Have you heard of those before, data observatories? I haven't either. So I made a mental note of what it was about, and then I did a bit of hunting around on the web, as everyone does, and find a bit more, found a bit more about the news article. And apparently, the article, the news was about the KPMG, the big accountancy company, um, sponsoring a what they call a data observatory down in data observatory down in Imperial College in London, and it's actually this is a sort of a view of it here. It's a whole arc of screens, display screens, which are actually quite high. This guy's about six foot, say, so it's about ten foot high, three meters maybe, and an extensive arc of, of screens. You can see this. You can see how it all arcs around, and then this this. Uh, person is sitting in, in the middle of them as well. And it's displaying all kinds of different graphics on here. Um, and so it's just opened, just recent, just the last few days. So if we look in, let's just have a look at the, uh, the website for a minute. So this is the article here, and this is another picture of the, of the um, display. And it says you can allow people to visualize everything from <coughs> cryptocurrency transactions. I'm not sure what they are. We were talking about migration patterns the other week. I'm not sure if that's human, human migration or animal migration. But um, so that opened yesterday, in fact. There we go, 3rd of November. Um, immense data processing capacity. Allows users to see data patterns close up. These are exactly the things we've been talking about over the last few weeks. Um, and just talking about data visualization as well. So, something to, um, to have a look at in a bit more detail. I'd never heard of data observatories before. And then there's another article about it here. And again, you can see this, this gives you a better picture of the actual display with this arc of screens with a map of London on it. Um, so you can see the size of it, this um, data observatory. Um, Europe's largest data observatory turns, turns big data into big images. There we go. Lots of fancy buzzwords, big data into big images. Uh, I hadn't heard of this before. So a new, an emerging technology, as you might say. Is, there's some more patterns here. It's data observatory is a place where you can see patterns in the data. Well, that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. We're trying to look for patterns in data and then making decisions, smart insights, on, based on those patterns of, of data. So I thought that was pretty that was interesting stuff. It's exactly the kind of thing that we're, we're doing here, and looking at the issues of And so then I had a look around. I had not heard of them before. And then I thought, okay, are there any more anywhere? And I found a few other examples of data observatories. These are from Northern England. Those of you who are not familiar with the geography. Um, and let's have a look at the Warwickshire one. That's a bit further south. From here. And it looks to me like what we were looking at the other week, actually a lot of data sources. Whereas the one in London is a big screen where you can actually see the patterns of the data. It seems to me these are more to do with data sources and, and stores of data than actually producing big displays on it. You can see 
the Warwickshire Cybercrime Survey results. You know, um, pupil absences, uh, understanding Warwickshire's population, public health report. So this is public data that they uh, seem to be putting on on the web for people to um, to look at. Exactly what we started off with three or four weeks ago with uh, Tim Berners-Lee and his sort of uh, what's the word pushing for more open data. So I felt that was uh, maybe look at one more. So this is Lincolnshire, just done. Um, So it says, welcome to the North Lincolnshire Data Observatory. You can't see it very well, actually. You can see the picture better on your screens. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that building is, but um, the website here that we're looking at, it says, provides access to information on a wide range of themes collected from national and local data sources. OK, using interactive maps, dynamic charts, and tables to, to provide a clearer understanding of areas within North so again, it looks like it's taking open source data created by the authorities and then displaying it in some kind of way on screen in visualizations so you can then pick up the um, trends and make smart, in smart insights, if you like. Information by theme, links to local observatories there. So this is a whole new world that I didn't know existed. So, interesting, interesting, and um, interesting new ideas to, to pursue and, and uh, explore there. Okay. So, in the last couple of lectures, I've explained the sort of topic and then talked about some people that are very influential in that. So we had Tim Berners-Lee, Hans Rosling uh, from previous weeks, and. Uh, so these are a few now of the key people that are at their leading edge of, of uh, dashboard design, if you like. So Stephen Few here, and I have his book, and also he's also written three or four others, and all these are in the library. In fact, I have them here. I'm just about to take them back because I was looking through it for this. This one isn't in the library. I'll, I'll arrange for that one to be in. So. Plenty of places to go for more information. Um, leading expert in data visualization for sense making. Okay, sense making and communication. That's an interesting word, sense making. Similar to smart insight, you know, we're trying to make sense and make decisions and understand what's going on. If we have a look at his website, Central Edge, his company, for a minute. He's got all sorts of things in here. Uh, if we go to his library, for example, he's plugging his book, of course, or why not? And he's also got his other books in there. Um, show me the numbers as well, which I've got on my desk, and now you see it, I have here, right in front of me. And then there's a lot of articles here as well, which may well be useful to you when you're doing your research for your assignment on that. So we've got um, Big Data, Big Roos, uh, Cartographic Malpractice, there's also kind of, you know, there's maybe some useful things in there. Um, dashboard Confusion, Dashboard Design for Rich and Rapid, Dashboard Design for Rich and Rapid Monitoring. So you can see he's written a lot of stuff that may well be useful to you when you get on with your research work and your assignments and your papers and things. So, a mine of information there. Another one, Colin Ware, written a couple of books. This one, and the visual thinking one is in the library. The other one isn't. I'm just about to put an order for that in. Um, but this was interesting specializes in advanced data visualization and has a special interest in applications of visualization to ocean mapping. So I thought that was an interesting 
angle on visualization. And he's in the University of New Hampshire in the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping. Now that's an unusual place to work, I would have thought. Would you have imagined that somebody doing this kind of stuff would be working in that part of the university? You never know what you find when you go digging around. You know, it's all fascinating stuff. Let's just have a look at what he's got. So, um, where likes to build useful visualization systems. Okay, well, that's exactly what we're trying to do. You can't see it on there very well, can you? Because the light. Um, So oh, again, and again, it's got a list of publications and research. Colin Ware's publications. Um, there's one down here that I thought was quite interesting. Okay, I don't know if you can see. But it's not easy to see on that screen, is it? Visualizing the underwater behaviour of humpback whales. earth is that all about? <laughs> but it's, you know, there you are, there it is, it's all in there somewhere. You know. So it's amazing what we can use this, these approaches to do. Fascinating in, you know, stuff there, really. Okay, so, Colin Ware, somebody else that is influential in this area, Albert Cairo, and again, I like what his, his sort of interest is. Convergence between visual communication, journalism, cognitive science, cartography, and statistics. Okay. Visual communication, that's exactly what we're doing. Journalism, well, David McLeese was a journal he's a journalist, and we saw him the other week. Cognitive science, we've done a dabble of that in the second year, if you remember those of you who have been through the years with me. Map cartography, mapping, Google Maps, all that kind of stuff, statistics, that's exactly what we're looking at as well. So all these things are exactly what we're, we're trying to do. Um, so let's just have a look at his, his website again as well. School of Communication is in. Uh, visual journalism, interesting words, but basically what? New words for the same thing, really. Uh, visualizations, dashboards almost even. So, again, another interesting person doing some interesting things. And there's a, again, there's a, he's got a book here. That isn't in the library. Again, it's, I'm going to put a, a list in to get for it. And then again, he's got his functional art website with um, all sorts of things in there. Reviews the author. Okay. All exactly relative, rela uh, rela um, relative, and interesting to what we're doing over the last few weeks and the rest of the module. Really. And then there's another guy called Wayne Eckerson. Again, is another book here, and the Data Warehousing Institute. Sounds like it could be a source of data. And if you have a quick look in there, um, there's various places to go and have a look around in. There's a USA um, site as well. So, lots of places to have a look at and explore. All to do with the same topic of what we've been looking at. So that's a whiz through dashboards. Any observations, comments? Have you? I'm assuming that an hour ago you knew nothing about dashboards, and now, after an hour, you know, you know a fair bit. And lots of places to go for more interesting information. Okay. Any comments, observations?
Right, so the exercise for the rest of the day then, the rest of the morning.